Opening the eyes of the universe. The following is a presentation of Truth and Love Advent Ministries. Our scripture reading is taken from Psalms 91, verses 2 through 8. The Bible says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the sneer of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Psalms 91, verse 2 through 8. As I was saying earlier, we are in some very serious times. We are in the final crisis, the downward spiral of this world's history, and we are going to see some things, but as our theme song just said, blessed assurance, Jesus is ours, and we need more than anything, my brethren, to embrace this glorious fact that Jesus is ours, and as we go through the trying days ahead, as Habakkuk says, we may not have the luxuries and the privileges that we've had in former days. In fact, I was going to save this until the end if others joined so that I didn't have to repeat, but I want to say it now. Brethren, when I want, to, oh, beloved, if you get a chance and scratch that, please make some time to go back over the little book, The New World Economic Order. There are some things in there that are going to be played out even now. That book, as I was sharing with someone, is very much ahead of its time. Things are taking place right now and are about to take place to fulfill where the Bible says that they won't be able to buy or sell except they have the mark of the beast. Structures and things are being put in place right now, brethren. And so this is the reason why we need to know and to have that blessed assurance because we're going to be tempted to believe that we have to fend 
for ourselves. But the word of God that hopefully you read with your own eyes on this evening said, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So those things that I just mentioned, the, the adverse situations that will come up, if we find ourselves that Jesus is ours, then we'll be sheltered in a time of storm. So we're going to begin reading. It's only two pages from the book Lessons on Faith, but it's some powerful admonition for God's people on this evening as we get ready to transition to the latter half of 2023. And brethren, let me tell you, as I've been looking at it, we're in for a wild ride. We have got to buckle up in God's word and buckle down in prayer. It's going to get very interesting. The Bible says, I'm sorry, excuse me, the lesson says, this is from the chapter kept by the word. This is A.T. Jones' writings. In the Christian life, everything depends upon the word of God. In the Christian life, everything depends upon the word of God. One of the beautiful things I love about A.T. Jones and E.J. Wagner, when they begin a paragraph, when they begin a sentence, when they begin a topic, it's with a powerful, powerful line. And this is one of the most powerful. In fact, that's something that we're talking about this morning in devotion, mentioned it, the acronym Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. That simple. But everything in our life depends upon that word. In verse, in chapter, in page 7 of this very book that we're reading, he gives a beautiful definition of what true faith is. When you get time, go back and look at it. It is true that God is able and desires to keep us from sinning, but this must be done through his word. So it is written, By the word of thy lips I have kept me from the path of the destroyer. Isn't that what we just said just now? That when these things are about to happen, like I was sharing with someone the other day, growing up, you know, all of us from the islands, and you may not have seen it, but I've seen it with my own eyes, them, how they prepare, you know, to a chicken, and they cut the head off while it's alive, and I've seen one that actually was running away, got, got away, and that expression, like a chicken with its head cut off, is an actual expression and it is a fitting expression of what will be happening in these last days. Notice again, it says, by the, word of the, by the words of thy lips, I have kept me from the path of the destroyer. And so must we. Thy word have I hid in my heart that might not sin against thee. Oh, my brethren, if I had time just on this point alone, we could just consume entire hours talking about what we've been looking at in our morning devotions on Fridays, how important it is for us to modify our own nature because this flesh of ours will rise up. And especially if we have families to provide for, mouths to feed and things to take care of financially, and we're going to be tempted on these matters. The Word of God is clear that we need to have that Word resident in our heart or else will give in to the temptation to go to the other side because we don't see no alternative. We don't see no way out. Brethren, let me tell you, let me tell you, God, our God is faithful. And just when you think that, as the song says, we can't trace his hands, brethren, learn to trust his heart. It's a learning process. It's an experience. It's a thing that we have to do consciously, effortly. I guess this is one of the reasons why some persons fall off, because they didn't expect to break this much sweat. They thought it was easy street. The Bible says, no, that's the other road. That's the other side. That's across the fence. You know, the place where it's greener on the other side? No. On this side, we have many hard battles to pass through. We have many conflicts to overcome. Those people, you know, they have the, the ease and the comfort and all the goodies of life. And at the end, that's when the destruction comes. 
we have the hardships and the roughness and the rough roads and the rugged mountains to climb up. But over yonder, that's when the sweet time comes and that's when the easy time comes and that's when we get to you know, <sighs> just relax because it'll be, it'll be over. But for now, brethren, we have got battles to fight and the greatest one is with ourselves. And when push comes to shove and the rubber meets the road, what is it going to be like when we, Sister Octavia, you have a shop, Elliot Ken, you have a business, Brother Alvin, Brother Joel, Auntie Jenny, you're all, we're all dependent on finances for A, B, C, X, Y, and Z. What's going to happen when our government say, unless you conform to the customs of state, you won't be able to buy and sell, you won't be able to function, how shall we stand? in those days. It is now that we've got to be making up our mind. And as I said this morning in devotion, we've we've done a number on ourselves. The this first half of twenty twenty three, we have one more half to go. Brethren, by the grace and mercy of God, the mistakes, the failures, the errors, that which was that which we neglected to do in this first half of twenty twenty three, brethren Again, once again, that which we have neglected to do in this first half of 2023. Let's not bring those mistakes into the latter half of 2023. So now, let us train ourselves to be ready to, as we were told a couple of weeks back, to be able to withstand hunger, weariness, and delay. To be able to trust God when, as I was mentioned earlier from Habakkuk, when there's no food on the vine, no meat in the stall, no, nothing to say, oh, I got this. It is only then can we be assured that God's got this. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. This is the way that God has appointed, and there is no other way to have this thing accomplished, being kept by his word. Nor is this way appointed merely because he arbitrarily chose that this should be the way and then laid it upon men that this must be the way that they should go. I was contemplating this line before I came online. And that's what I want us to understand, brethren, that what we're about to go through is no arbitrary action, no arbitrariness on the path, on, the, on, on God's behalf, put it that way. The Bible says, whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. And so we've been taken for granted. Okay, well, I have time. And, ooh, isn't that one of the things that we talked about? I believe that was last Friday. Oh, we have time. Brethren, brethren, let us remember, let us remember, as the Bible says, that things are going to be cut short in righteousness. And that's a good thing. But let us not think that these things that we're going through, that you'll always, we'll always wake up one day and then the next day follow. Wake up and the next day follows. There's going to be a drastic interruption in our everyday soon and very soon, brethren. And we must be made aware now to understand that what we are doing Right now, the characters we are forming, the habits we are imbibing, the way we are going, is going to determine our response in the crisis. Nor is this way appointed merely because he arbitrarily chose that this should be the way and then laid it upon men that this must be the way that they should go. His word is the way of salvation and the way of sanctification. Christian living, in other words, because this is the way that the Lord does things, because this is the way that he manifests himself. It was by his word that he created all things in the beginning. It is by his word that he creates men anew, and it will be by his word that he will recreate this world and all things pertaining to it. By the word of the Lord have were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. You know, when, when that hit me some years back, 
I was reading these words at Psalms 33, 6 and 9. And, you know, for years and years, I grew up hearing people saying, oh, God formed this and that by his word. But when it came to man, he, you know, stooped down in the mud and he scooped this and he did that and whatnot. Word of God tells me that everything was an act of God's word. And just as the topic of the chapter says, being kept by the word, that very word, it's what we were created with, what we were created by, is keeping us. So when you get tempted to step out of that word and go off into works, you are going against your programming. Think about that. Being born again by the word of God, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, un, and said unto me, it is done. It is not only that the worlds were created by the word of God, but they are also sustained by the same word that we just said. By the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the word of God, the worlds that then were being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Brethren, again, like I've been saying as we go through, understand that during the common final crisis, things will happen to test our faith severely. Has it been you, God, all along, leading us out? We're going to get tempted to say words that we never thought we'd say in our natural lives, looking back at ancient Israel and mocking them for just coming out of Egyptian you know, bondage and being set free by God's amazing power and all of a sudden now that victory that God wrought the cry, the murmuring, the complaining if we're not careful we're going to find ourselves in that very same position and that is why we have to allow that word that we're talking about to keep us. That's why we have to be reminded that it is by God's word that he created it is by God's word that he recreated. It is by God's word that he's sustaining. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. And like I said this morning in our morning devotion session, brethren, if we have not come to terms with the fact that we have to let this world go so that we can embrace Jesus, so that Christ could be our life, we're in for a rude awakening. Because, you see, brethren, as I said earlier, when the rubber meets the road and the dust begins to settle, we're going to find out in a rude awakening that the things that we thought that mattered don't really matter. The things that we strive to attain, the positions and the things that we, the things that we were killing ourselves over, rather than doing the Matthew 6.33 and the Matthew 5.48, we relegate it to the back burner while we try to make a living, convincing ourselves, oh, we live in a capitalistic society and we need to live as the Romans. Oh, my brethren, my brethren. That's only part of it we have to render to Caesar that which is his. But the Bible also says that we need to render to God that which is his. Have we done the one to the exclusion of the other? Think on these things. So also it is not only that the Christian is created by the word of God, but by that same word is sustained, nourished, and caused to grow. God holds up all things by his powerful word, and the Christian is among this, praise God, and the Christian is among this. That's why, for those of you who are on earlier, you heard the song, I have decided to make Jesus my choice. And it's a daily, momentary matter that we must. And the Christian is among this holding up. Oh, brethren, as I said earlier to those who are on, and I want to say again, and I know it's going to say it again anyway, so I don't mind repeating it because it bears repeating. For those of you who have been paying attention, I know for sure, and even without saying it, that Ella Can, Sister Raquel, or two people who I know for sure have their finger on the pulse of current events and all of us have got to get in line, got to step, you know, on that train. And as it roars ahead, 
continue to focus our attention on things above, but remember that this world is coming to its climax. And if we're not paying attention to what's going on, we'll think that we have time. We'll think that we are the ones on Easy Street, and we are going to conform little by little, like that eyedropper, to the things of this life. And that which was once glorious grape juice is just purple water. Brethren, let me tell you, let me tell you, as we saw in the first page, page 81, these are not arbitrary actions, my friends. God is not going to keep us if we don't want to be kept. That's why we must pray as we read in Steps of Christ 70. It says, consecrate ourselves to God every morning. Make this a daily matter. Use me today in your service, Lord. That must be our prayer. And that blessed assurance will be ours that despite what is going on in our world today, yes, we are coming to the conclusion. Things are happening in the economic world. Like I said, I don't know how many people are paying attention to it, but things are coming together so that those words in Revelation 13 where it says that they won't be able to buy and sell except they have the mark of the beast. Those things are coming together. Those things are taking shape even now as we speak. Brethren, we have got to get our houses in order. We have got to get our priorities together. We have got to make those things that really matter, matter. There can be no question, whatever, that all the worlds are held up and held in their places by the Lord. But it is not only all the worlds, it is all things that are held up and held in place by the Lord. And it is as true of the Christian as it is of any star in the firmament or any world on high. I hope we get this, brethren. I hope we get this because this is at the heart of tonight's thought. This is at the heart of tonight's thought, brethren. This world, you know, one of the things that I was sharing on my Facebook earlier today was that persons are crying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, meaning the things that transpired this week here in the United States because of the Supreme Court, the abolishing of affirmative action, the, I think it was, what was today, the, the rejection of the, the student loans, the other one was the, what was that? Oh my goodness, I forgot, I forgot, but you know, the, these walls that were built up are cr crumbling down and persons are, are, are crying out, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, when that which they need to worry about because the truth of the matter is, and as, I, as I've looked at it from year after year after year, every election cycle you've heard, oh, this is the most important election of our lifetime, and they talk about doom and gloom, and this is going to happen, and that is going to happen, and yet we wake up in the morning and go to sleep, wake up in the morning and go to sleep, and we've been doing so for, since that time. It's not the sky is falling that we've got to worry about. It's the ground crumbling beneath our feet that we've got to worry about. The, 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 the earth is shifting and it's becoming sifting sands on the feet. And there's nothing stable that we can rely on nowadays. And that is why we have got to make Jesus our choice. And that is why our blessed assurance has got to hinge on that word of God, that naked word of God, as these present calls it. Learning to trust and to depend on that word, to do what it says that it will do. And just because you can't see God in operation, just because you can't see God at the end of your misery, of your hurt, of your confusion, of your concerns, when you can't trace his hands, trust his heart. And it is as true of the Christian as it is of any star in the firmament or any world on high. Have not heard them say that they saw a distant world because they could see the distant worlds in the high fluting telescopes they have out there. They have not reported that a world has come crashing down into another world. A star is headed to Earth in a collision course and so on and so forth. And the very God who said to those stars and to those worlds, Hither shall you come and no further. That same God, if we allow him, if we let him, will sustain us and strengthen our faith during the final crisis.
And it is as true of the Christian as it is of any star in the firmament or any world on high. Nor can there be any question that the stars and the worlds are held up and held in their course by the word of the Lord. And no less than this can there be any question that the Christian is held up and held in his right course by the word of the Lord. If we let him, brethren, if we let him. This is to be believed and depended upon by everyone who professes the name of Christ. You and I can no more hold ourselves up in the right way than can the sun or the earth. Facts. Facts. And as certainly as the worlds are dependent upon his word, so certainly is a Christian to depend upon his word. One of the things I shared today on social media is that persons have so depended upon human instrumentalities, human resources to keep them, to give them an education, to give them a job, to depend upon them for their freedom, for their equality, for their this, for their that. And when humans give it, humans can take it away. That's, again, shifting sand, as I was saying earlier. That's why persons have concerns, because what today was stable, tomorrow could be very much unstable. But the word of God remains. From the day of your birth up until now, you've seen the sun do what it do in the morning, and you see what the moon do in the evening. And there has been the same situation to the course of your life, has it not been? And the same God who does that, the same God who orders the vast universe and says to it, hold, will hold you if you dare to believe, if you dare to trust him, if you dare to depend upon that word. So certainly is a Christian to depend upon his word. And when this is so, the Christian is kept in the way of the Lord as certainly and as easily as is any planet in the universe. It is written that he is able to keep you. He is able to keep you from falling. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Praise God. Praise God. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. Beloved, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This world that we see today, the society that we are enjoying, the freedoms and the opportunities of today, the freewheeling cash flow, the freedoms, the opportunities that we have today, in a little while, in the blink of an eye, they shall be no more. And it is not because they're trying to get at the people that you see them going after in the world. Brethren, those weapons that are being turned on politicians and pundits and movie stars and actors and celebrities and whoever in a little while will be turned against you. You're going to be the target of this universal action. You're going to be the reason why all of these things were implemented in the first place and those persons were just proving grounds. And that's why you have to realize that how shall you stand in that great day? By continuing to trust in the word of the Lord. Brethren, as I said, can't sugarcoat it, can't make it easy street, can't make us feel easy and comfortable on tonight as we wind down first half of 2023 and head into the back end of 2023. If we have been living easy in 2023, if we have been taking life for granted, brethren, it's time to sharpen up, it's time to wisen up, it's time to wake up. It's time to realize that our dependence is not on the things of this world. If we've been trying to get ourselves a little nest egg, trying to ride out the storm with the natural things of life, because, well, you know, God is there, but, you know, maybe, and so on and so forth, and all the different temptations that come to the ears. Oh, my brethren, let us learn to lean and depend on Jesus. As I was saying to the brethren this morning, we sing the song, I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I am satisfied with Jesus. But the question should come to us in this solemn hour. Is our Savior satisfied with us when he looks at us? Does he see us, as I mentioned earlier, like little chickens with our heads cut off, just running around aimlessly because we don't know who holds our future because we've let go of his hands? Oh, struggling, failing Christian, 
Is not that word which holds up great worlds able to also to hold you? Trust that word. Depend implicitly upon it. Rest wholly upon it. And then you will find rest in it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Trust the Lord to hold you up. Just as you trust him to uphold the sun. Yes, Lord. His word holds up the sun. And his word is over and over and his word is over and over to you. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. I will uphold thee. I will keep thee. Thou art mine. It's because we have forgotten these basic principles that we are not our own, that our lives are not our own. We panic and fear and fret. Our lives are here with Christ in God. Let us seek. Let us with our eyes look over yonder. This world is not our home. Let us not rest easy that we'll always have it this good. Things are about to change in the blink of an eye. And we are going to need to have that blessed assurance that Jesus is ours when everything else is stripped away from us. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee till I have done that thing which I have spoken to thee of. As we start to wind down, it says, The word of God is quick, living, active, powerful. Powerful means full of power. The word of God is living and full of power to do for you, with you, and in you all that the word says. Believe that word. Trust it. For it is the word of the living God. It is the word of the pitying Savior. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You are kept by the power of God through faith. Let me pause and share. For those of you looking on your screen or have looked on your screen or have seen the picture that I'm using, I saw a similar picture earlier today. And I thought about back in those days when Fathers used to throw their kids up in the ear, you know, and they would fall back into the same hands. And as children, was there ever a child, a boy or girl, that ever wondered in their child, boy, girl, little mind, is my daddy going to catch me? I dare say no. I dare say no. That smile that they had on the face went up, and the smile that they had on the face came down with them. Brethren, that's how... We were back in those carefree days, and that's where we need to get back to resting and trusting. The faith that we live by is a faith that ought to know that our Father cares. Brothers and sisters, as we wind down, I trust and pray that you will embrace, embrace wholeheartedly the fact, my beloved, that our God, who holds this universe of stars and planets and innumerable people holds us and will continue to hold us through the coming crisis. The word of God is living and full of power to do for you, with you and in you all that the word says. Believe that word, trust it, for it is the word of the living God. It is the word of the pitying Savior. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, that the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You are kept by the power of God through faith. The power of God is manifested through his word, and therefore it is his powerful word. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Therefore it is the faithful word, the word full of faith. Therefore, when he says, you are kept by the power of God through faith, it is only saying in another way, you are kept by the word of God. Sisters and brothers, or brothers and sisters, understand that at the heart of it all, at the core of everything that I've shared this evening, that word that we are talking about, that we've been talking about since we began, is not just some passive word. That word has within it the same effect of, as we were talking about weeks back in devotion, that seed principle. 
where in that seed is everything that you will see in that tree that's grown. And that farmer or whoever plants that seed did not put in there some green food color, red food color, orange food color, didn't put in there some pounded sugar for the sweetness or salt or whatever for the flavor of that fruit. All of that was in the seed. And all that we need is in that word of God. And so when God spoke originally and when God spoke in the recreation and when God speaks to you this very night and said, be still and know, brethren, be still and know. Be still and know. You are kept by the word of God unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Believe that word. Trust it and find its keeping power. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for speaking to our hearts on this evening. Lord God, as we come to the conclusion of our study on tonight, on the Vesper Thought tonight, Lord God, I just want to pray that your word, Lord, would have been made relevant in our hearts. Father God, I pray that the truth, as it is in Jesus, has come closer to us than any time this week, O oh God, that it has been made relevant on tonight, Lord God, that despite, despite the fact that we are thinking that we're going to have to do something to preserve our lives, to protect our way of living, to preserve our ways. Lord, help us to be reminded that what prophecy declares will be true, that your children will be a hated sect, that the combined force of the world will be against the faithful few, that few who hold the line and like their three Hebrew worthies do not bow. Help us, Heavenly Father, to realize that our blessed assurance is to know that Jesus is ours. And when all else fails, and when we can have no other assurance, when all else is sifting sand, may we find ourselves secure and standing upon the rock of ages. Heavenly Father, please forgive us where we have come short in this first half of 2023. Lord, as we usher in, half to Lord God the second half of this year Lord may this Sabbath day the first day of this new month be to us a new year Lord God and help us to resolve help us to pledge help us to be motivated Lord God to put away the things put down the things that don't matter put down the things that do not pertain to life Lord Jesus I pray that you will give us victory upon victory, Lord Jesus, as we say, take this world, but give me Jesus. As we say, I have decided to make Jesus my choice. As we say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Father God, I pray that you will grant us faith for the final crisis. May we be found standing in you and found unshaken when the unshakable kingdom comes into view. Lord, help us, I pray. And when we've done all, finally, Lord, help us to stand. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for allowing your words to dwell richly in our hearts. Now, Father, as we go away from this place, I trust and pray that all that you have spoken into our spirits, Lord God, just as we read, Lord, just as we heard, Lord, we'll make it active. We'll make it practical. We'll make it a part of who we are going forward, knowing in whom we have believed. Grant us a good night's rest, Lord Jesus, and I pray if we, if you bless us to see the morning, that we'll be found in your course, either locally or virtually, and as we welcome this glorious Sabbath day, Lord God, I just pray that this first Sabbath of this brand new month of the second half of 2023 will meet us, Lord God much different and determined to do better because we know better. Thank you, praise you, for you, O oh Lord God, deserve the praise, the honor, and the glory we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
But then I want to thank you so very much for being a part of our Vesper experience on tonight. I trust and pray that your souls were watered, that your spirits were fed, and that the word came through with utmost clarity, and that you were blessed. And the way that I will find out is right now, as you share with me your thoughts. The floor is open. Good evening, sis. Good evening, sis. How you doing? Amen. Praise the Lord. just before the next person speaks you know a lot of times when we talk about these end time scenarios trepidation and fear grips hearts of persons and they imagine gloom and doom and worries and anxieties but tonight I want you to picture not something of defeat but of victory like the expectation of the work week or work weeks and you're expecting a paycheck at the end or the end of the school year and you're expecting your degree or your diploma and that's it and that that's to look forward to not a gloom and doom experience but the joy of victory the joy of overcoming the joy of knowing that as sister Octavia was just saying having turned our backs on the things of this world and decided to follow Jesus we get the victory. We see what happens as at the end of Revelation 3. Again, as we said, we've been looking at this evening and these past weeks, the joy of the overcomer. Any other thoughts? Thank you. 